I'm Paul Hildebrandt's Shadow, and I'm going to talk about going from zero to four dimensions using Zone Tool and Shadows. You have to start um, with understanding what a dimension is, and really all a dimension is is a line. This is a, a Zone Tool blue line. It, uh, at least this object, this strut, represents a line in space. And the only thing that makes a dimension special is that it's perpendicular to all the other dimensions. Now, what is perpendicular? Any, any two-year-old who can walk understands what perpendicular is. I've got my little guy here, and you see when I cast a shadow of the ground, and the guy, the guy is perpendicular with the ground. And in fact, if, if he gets off of being perpendicular, he's liable to fall over. So anyone who can walk knows what being perpendicular is. When you walk, you're perpendicular to the ground or you're parallel with the force of gravity. So in a world with no lines, no dimensions, you only have points. A no-dimensional universe would just be one point. Uh, the zone tool ball represents a point or a zero-dimensional zero object. So you take zero dimensions, you get a point. If you were to take that point and drag it through space along a line, in this case I'll just drag it along a line of gravity, and if I go at a certain speed, say one blue line per second, I'll trace out this long blue line. And you can see that on each end of the long blue line there's a point. And you probably remember somebody saying two points define a line and in fact uh, they do these, this line segment of length one long blue line uh, could go on forever in each direction but for now we just want to have this blue line segment and we have so we went um, zero dimensions, gave us a point. Two points give us a line, or a one-dimensional object. And if I want to trace out a, a square, a two-dimensional object, I need to go in a direction that's perpendicular to the line. And let's say if I'm constrained to the wall, if I'm living in the wall, if I'm a flatlander, I, I really can only go either south or north and and so because there any other direction would not be perpendicular to this line so I'll take this blue line and say that's gonna you can see that 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 blue line the new blue line is perpendicular with our blue line segment and if I drag it for that distance one one thousand at that speed I'll trace out a square. You'll recognize the square. It's got four points. It's made up of four lines. Um, it's all, you can almost think of it as a, a number four in two dimensions. And um, so, just as the zero dimensions gave us a point, the two points gave us the one dimensional line, the four lines give us the two dimensional square, we could predict that maybe there's a pattern there and that um, in three dimensions we'd have zero, two, four, six squares making a cube. Now that's easy enough to do. All I have to do is move west away from the wall that is in a direction perpendicular to up and down and north and south and, and I'll trace out a cube. So here we go. Just go one one thousand. I trace out this cube, and also as long as we were making shadows, we can see that the cube will make very nice shadows. We can even squash the cube back into a, a square, more or less. And and really. 
what you're interpreting as a cube is flat. This is on a flat screen probably where you're watching and that flat screen is being projected into your eyeball onto your retina which is another sort of flat screen on the surface of a sphere. But um, your mind is giving you cues that this is actually a three-dimensional object. Now, the trick to going to four, four dimensions is finding another dimension that's perpendicular with the first three, which proves to be somewhat difficult. But if we go back to being a flatlander, we would imagine we live in the wall. We're completely flat creatures. Um, we, can, we can see by analogy how to get to four dimensions. So here's our square, which could be living in the wall, if it were just points and lines and not zone tool parts. And a flatlander would see this square as a line. So you can see, if I make it uh, parallel with the, the rays from the slide projector, I'm getting, this is what a flatlander would see, the square might look like that, or it might look like that, but it would it would appear to be a line. Now, you'd know that it was made up of four lines because you could go around and count them one, two, three, four. You know it had four corners as well. And I say, well, there there is this there's a possibility mathematically of a, a three-dimensional object that would be instead of being a square made up of four lines joined corner to corner point at, at their endpoints, um, the cube would be made up of zero, two, four, six squares um, joined edge to edge. And all you have to do is drag this through space in a direction that's perpendicular to the other two. And they say, well, you can't do that. It's, there, there are no other directions. There's only or no, no other dimensions. Obviously there are other directions, but there's only um, up and down and north-south. There's, there's no such thing as east-west. And so we go, well, what if we were just going to, to go in an arbitrary direction? I'll, I'll put this, this red line in, which is, that'll represent our arbitrary direction. It will drag our, our cube along that direction for a, a certain amount of time, like a medium red strut per second for one second, go one one thousand and you can almost see the corners would drag out these these speed lines, right? So go one one thousand and and if we connect the speed lines we end up with this this lovely shadow. It's not a, it's not a cube, but it's a it's a two dimensional shadow of a cube and and we can see that, right? It, it looks very similar to the shadow that this three-dimensional cube casts. It's, it's not quite perfect because I made it up of two squares connected by red lines. And so a, a, a more accurate version of that would, would be something like this where all of the squares have been distorted. But in this case, a lot of people, we, we like to draw a, a cube this way, and it, it's a good way of thinking about it, because you can see that it's got these, these two perfect squares. And then it's got these other four-sided objects, parallelograms. You know, the, um, so I'd say, well, yeah, look, you can see all six of the squares that we predicted. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, now a flatlander might object and say, "Well, yeah, that really isn't a that, that this isn't really a square, right?" And uh, likewise, the other the other one, this this other kind of distorted version, is not a square. And I say, "Well, yeah, it's been it's been flattened out due to the projection, right?" And and we can accept that as three dimensional beings. But it's a little tough for the flatlanders to, to imagine that this object could really be a shadow of a three-dimensional cube. Um, now, if we were going to go to 
go back to our, our cube and try to drag it through space in a direction perpendicular to the first three, you go, well, you really can't. I mean, you've already used up, up down, north, south, and, and east, west. There's, there's, no other, there's no other way you can go where you can drag it through space where it'll be uh, perpendicular to the other three dimensions. Because if we've used them all up, there's only three dimensions. Everybody knows that. And I say, okay, that's fine. But what if we were to, to drag it through space in an, in an arbitrary direction? We'll just, we'll just choose, a, in this case, a, let's say a, a long yellow line. And if we were to drag it through space, it would maybe trace out a shadow of a four-dimensional cube. So, um, assuming that our prediction was correct, uh, that a three-dimensional cube has six faces, and we can see that it does, it's made up of six squares, then if we follow that pattern, we can predict how many cubes would make up a four-dimensional cube. Um, and that would be zero, two, four, six, eight, right? So if I take, I show the speed lines as I drag this cube through space, Go like that, one one thousand, the length of a yellow line in this case. I'll I'll trace out a four-dimensional cube shadow, and then of course you see a, behind it there's a two-dimensional shadow of a three-dimensional shadow of a four-dimensional cube. It's a little bit of fun to play with. I can go like that, and I can I can actually squash it back into that flat cube again. Um, now, let's, let's check and make sure it's consistent, right? You can see this is obviously a cube. I hope it's obvious to you in the, in the video. And this one is also obviously a cube. It's not distorted, right? But um, the other ones are, are, are clearly distorted. They've been, they've been squashed from four dimensions into our, our three-dimensional hyperplane. Um, and so they, they look like, like this object, which still is reminiscent of a cube, but clearly is not, uh, technically not a cube, right? It's close, but it's been flattened out a little bit by the projection. So if we can try to count those, right? We have, we've already counted the two regular cubes, and then there's this would make number three and number four, and these sort of line up on the north-south axis, and then five and six, these line up on the east-west axis, and then seven and eight, and these would line up on the up-down axis. So, so you can see that we do have, at least um, according to the prediction, the, the four-dimensional cube, hypercube, or tesseract, which just means four rays, um, is, is consistent with the prediction that, that it's made up of eight cubes, and you can also see that they're, they're joined face to face. This one, the, the one on top, is joined to this top face on that cube, and all, all the other faces are joined to form this, this hypercube shadow. One more point. There's a relationship between the number of points or corners in an object and the number of dimensions in which it lives. And in this case, the one point lives in a zero-dimensional universe all to itself. The line has, the line segment has two corners, which are twice as many points, and it lives in one dimension. The square which lives in two dimensions, has two squared corners, or four. Twice as many again. The cube, which lives in three dimensions, has two cubed corners, or twice as many again, eight. And the hypercube shadow has, which lives in four dimensions, has two to the fourth corners, or 16. Now, the question you might ask is, can you keep going? And the answer is, of course you can. Here's a shape that's related to a six-dimensional cube. It doesn't have all the little cubes inside. It's just the outer shell. So this is a, sh a, 
outer shell of a shadow of a six-dimensional cube, and its shadows are rather interesting. And in fact, if you wanted to, you could go up to 61 dimensions using zone tools, blue, yellow, red, and green lines, at least theoretically, because that would have two to the 61 balls in it, which is a very large number. In fact, we figure if we were going to make enough balls to build a 61-dimensional hypercube, it would take about 731 billion years, which is um, quite a bit longer than the life of the known universe. So if, if you want to build that model, please let us know. We'll have to get started right away.